Howdy y'all, welcome back to Little Bits. Today I want to talk a little bit about my next 8-bit computer build. Yeah, I'm just getting started with these things. This particular kit is the Z180 kit that I have talked about in previous videos once or twice that I'm going to be getting while well, I got it. So it's here. So this sheet shows everything that's in the kit. Uh, I do still have some clutter from previous builds floating around on this, but it's and garden beans as well. Uh, but uh, this is a much smaller project. This is the entire computer here. I do also have a back plane that I'll be able to plug into with some of these headers uh, and, and expand it and add peripherals and stuff. And uh, that's gonna be fun, um, but you can see that uh, I should be able to run, once this is put together, off of this device just by itself. Uh, it's a Z180, so it's like a Z80 plus some peripherals. It's almost more like a microcontroller. I think it has its serial interfaces built right in and stuff, so uh, I think we also get a spy interface, uh, which is how we can use this little spy-based SD card adapter with it. Um, yeah, and... Uh, I don't plan to focus on this one as much as the normal Z80, uh, but I do plan to compare both and, and use them to play off of each other in my, in my understanding of how to design computer systems from the ground up. So we'll get this soldered together and see if it boots. Beep to the boot. So to tell you a little bit about this kit before I start putting it together, it, it was developed by a gentleman named Stephen Cousins. Cousins? I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, sir, but uh, he's got a great set of kits. If you look at his website here, which I'll link in the description as well, there's a lot of blog posts about these types of computers, homebrew computers in general. He's done a lot of great work on this. Um, I found him on Tindy as well, where I got the RC 2014, and uh, he makes modules for the RC 2014. In fact, one of the modules I bought is not for this kit. Rather, it's for the 2014. And this will add an I2C uh, interface that I can use for interacting with sensors and things from from my kit now. Um, I also went ahead and built the, if you watched any of the RC2014 ones, I built the these kits. I, I have a regular Raspberry Pi Zero, but I needed to remove some old pins from it. Um, these pins are set up to solder a new one on. I couldn't get all the holes clear, so I just ordered a new one. I was tired of messing with it, uh, but Here's the digital I.O. kit. I just did those off camera because uh, they were quick. And if you got through the last video and you got your own kit and used it as a guide to put it together, then uh, you don't need help with these ones. If you got through that kit, you can get those together without me. So um, here we go. We'll get this Z180 kit put together. Since it's such a small kit, I will probably try to keep things uh, at normal speeds or closer to normal speeds so you can get more detail on the actual soldering process. Uh, all right, let's get it put together.
checking the documentation to make sure I had all the parts uh, I can pretty much figure out where everything needs to go just by the labels on the board you can see the creator here the Z50 bus is uh, created by actually another 8-bit uh, homebrew computer design group and the Z50 bus is used on this board but um, it has a heritage that predates this board. And this particular developer has several peripherals for this. You know, one of the kits that I'm gonna be putting together is a backplane for this. Um, I may or may not do that on camera. I think I'll be more interested in showing uh, building peripherals for this. Uh, I'm gonna use, of course, the RC2014. Uh, as my primary Collapse OS development workstation, but I want it to run on this too, and um, yeah, uh, I forgot what I was saying, so stuff and nonsense. I have been soldering for hours today. I don't know what's up. It's a Saturday. I was supposed to do some chores. I did some of my chores. But then I just started working on projects. Look, you can see exactly which which resistors you need. This is the only one nanofarad capacitor in the kit. All the others are 100 nanofarads. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty, pretty legit. I might swap out this clock here. Now, the way these microprocessors work is that the clock can be run at its native speed or it can be multiplied to double speed and 
I think this particular clock is 12, 12, 18, 18 megahertz, 18.432 megahertz. So if you multiply that, you get slightly more than, you get, you slightly overclock this. And I have one that will let me exactly clock to its maximum, which I would prefer to do. But it, whether I swap it out, and it goes here, I don't know why there's six, only four of these are connected to anything it looks like. It depends on whether any serial interfaces are driven directly by the clock, or and if changing it is gonna cause problems with connecting to it. Um, I can always replace it later if I need to, so. Here's the notch that needs to be faced over this way.
Yeah. Mm -hmm.
So we are done. These are optional ports. Uh, I don't understand this board at all yet. Uh, we'll get these sockets populated and then I'll show you whatever it's running uh, through FTDI. We'll probably just be powering it through uh, standard FTDI interface. showing in this crooked reset button. I've been getting better about soldering things on straight and not crooked, but uh, I got impatient here and that's what it looks like. Okay, so I think, ooh, touching pins, touching pins. I think it goes, oh no, here's the corner. There's the corner. See how it's straight there? So that means it goes this way. Like that's the only way I think it'll fit in. Okay, boop beep. Boop the beep. There we go. All right, now hopefully it works. <laughs> we'll find out. Stay tuned for terminal footage.